Well, in this session, we're exploring transformation planning in more detail. In preparation for your final portfolio assessment, where you're going to pre present your own transformation plan for your organization. So in this unit, we're looking at action research as a process to develop the policies that support the implementation of an educational technology. So you're going to be demonstrating your understanding of a range of research informed educational transformation approaches as we unpack what's required for a transformation plan. But essentially, we're going to build upon the work that you've done in the previous three modules towards framing your transformation planning for your organization. And in this session, we're going to look at transformational objectives what we're trying to achieve through transformation planning and setting organizational transformation goals. Okay, so in the tutorial this week, we're going to be discussing the organizational learning challenges that you are setting for your selected educational organization, what you're trying to achieve. Now, notice that we're not talking about the technologies. It goes broader than just that you're trying to make some change in your organization. Yes, that's going to incorporate the use of technology, but there are going to be much broader and more fundamental changes that we wish to see occur within your organization. Okay, so the first text to look at is a set of well, slides around the transformation of education moving from what's been done historically through to looking at emerging practices through to what could be done into the future. And these need to be positive things. Um, we're not looking at future studies here where we look at all the potential negatives. We're trying to frame a positive future for your organization and we're going to look at the processes involved in trying to achieve that. But first, we need to understand what might be possible. So there's a range of transformation elements that this particular document explores. The first is the challenges that are involved. Um, we start with the enabling capacity of your organization to face challenges what needs to be done to push the organization to embracing challenges and change, and then the empowerment that may be achieved with your organization through having engaged with the challenges involved. So again, very much around that learning organization concept where an organization builds the capacity to engage with challenges. Then there's also the cognitive complexity involved. Now we can start off with a lot of education being focused around memorization. Then we move towards um, education being focused on understanding and then towards the ideal where education is focused on the student's capacity for problem solving and engaging and utilizing their understanding in an applied way. There's an aspect of control and this is essentially who has the decision-making empowerment within an organization? Is it the faculty, the teachers, or at a higher level, it could be the government or the Ministry of Education? Um, is it focused on the learners? And well, is it, first, first, is it focused on the learning processes? Does the learning drive the decision-making in the organization rather than what the teachers might want or what the government might want? through to where the learners are actually the drivers. And this is much harder to achieve than might be first thought. Of course, they then make the decisions. Do they make the decisions on what the teachers do or what the organization, what the school does? Do they make decisions on budgets? Money is always a key indicator of who has a control over power. Um, it's quite difficult to get to a learning centered um, education organization. Not impossible though. And certainly in many cases, um, 
universities may be seen as achieving that, where often the academics, the researchers, drive the processes and the administrators, administrators just support that. Many universities, though, don't achieve that. It's very much um, either learning centered or indeed faculty centered. Sometimes not even that, sometimes administratively centered. But there are examples where it has been achieved, if not towards fully learner centered in terms of undergraduates, certainly as um, learner centered around academics being the learners within an organization. But in K 12, it's much more rare, uh, mostly because many of our students don't have the cognitive capacity and organizational capacity to make informed decisions at the level of budgets and hiring and firing of staff and decisions on what should be included in the curriculum and so forth. But we can certainly incorporate some levels of empowerment where students have some contributions, if not overall control in what occurs. Then there's processes of delivery, how the teaching is conducted. Is it based around presentations and lecture style formats? Is it based around discussion formats, small group tutorials? Or is it focused around what's called active learning, um, where all the learning activities are engaged, designed to engage students in an active process of knowledge creation and development? There's the design processes within an organization in terms of how things are designed and implemented. Um, is it very rigid and follows set procedures that have been laid down for many, many years? Is it modular where little parts of it can be adapted and changed without necessarily affecting the overall whole? Or is it responsive to ongoing changes and is constantly seeking to redesign and, and evolve in terms of an organization? Then there's the efficacy. And this is the capacity to change and make, and make differences within an organization. Um, are most of the participants doubtful that any change can first be affected or whether or not it will have any actually long lasting effect, even if it is affected? Um, are they willing to try and explore what might be possible? Or are they really keen on change and have a strong conviction that change must happen and that they want to see it happen and want to help drive that process of change? Few more elements around feedback. Now, feedback's been identified as one of the key um, qualities of effective education. Um, is it mostly focused though on evaluation? How well the course went? Um, how well the teacher was in presenting and, and involving um, elements of students and improvements in their courses? Or are there ongoing progress reports so that changes can occur during the year or during a semester? Or are there detailed assessments made and research conducted into the effectiveness of what's occurring within the organization? And that then relates to measurement, the processes of determining the level of quality of what's occurring, be it the student's learning or various other organizational quality elements. It could be the quality of the teachers, could be the quality of the administrators. Um, is it subjective though? Are they just key people that make that determination? Or is it based on a range of categories? Um, or is it objective? Are there set criteria that are measured against in terms of determining the quality of what's occurring within the organization? Who owns what's occurring? Um, is it directed from above in a hierarchical structure? Um, and you do essentially what you're told? Or is there some guidance where um, you have managers and peers that support you in guiding what you need to do? So you don't have complete autonomy, but you're not told and micromanaged exactly what has to be done. You're guided in what needs to be occurring. Through to, is it self-directed? Not just for staff, but also for students and for administrators and for states within a country. How is the how much autonomy and ownership do individuals or teachers or schools or states have within the wider organization? 
the relationships that occur within the organization is another element. Um, are individuals and organizations and states and, um, emotionally distant, sort of separated, not really engaging with each other on terms of how processes are occurring and how they're feeling about the processes and their confidence levels, their engagement. Are people emotionally available to talk about those issues and to engage with them? Or are they emotionally invested? Do they fundamentally um, have an emotional connection with what's occurring? So in terms of the change that you want to see occur within your organization, are there individuals that are uh, truly invested in terms of their self-identity and self-worth, um, their feelings of whether or not they are successful as a teacher um, with what occurs with the transformation you're proposing? There's also the consideration of the scope of learning that's being attempted. Is it around a particular situation, such as preparing students to pass a test or to be um, directly employed in a particular um, employment opportunity? Through to, are you trying to develop their understanding of an entire discipline so that they understand all the nuances, say in teacher education, with the capacity to be employed as a primary teacher through to a secondary or tertiary teacher, and there's a whole lot of fundamental skills around teaching that could be applied as a, um, a teacher librarian or a museum educator. So there's a whole range of aspects around learning that's being developed in the capacity of teachers that they can apply in a whole range of contexts. Through to, are you trying to achieve interdisciplinary understanding? So not just um, in this case about teacher education, about preparing them to be teachers, but also understandings of sociology, um, so feminist studies and ecological studies and those issues, through to brain studies and researching around cognition and um, ph um, philosophy and psychology and a whole range of other interdisciplinary um, studies that relate to teacher education, but are not necessarily fundamental. And so someone engaged with those studies could go on and then become a psychologist, not necessarily using the aspects that they learned around teaching, but having enough interdisciplinary studies to explore other pathways. Then there's self-awareness. Um, this comes under many different terms. Metacognition is one, but it's an understanding that we can direct our own learning. So at a base level, we might be self-conscious about our capacity to be, say, a teacher, um, where we doubt ourselves and we don't necessarily feel that we are, have learnt enough and, and are self-conscious about our understanding. Through to self-regulated, where we take some control and ownership of our own learning processes. And we understand that, okay, yes, we have some um, lack of capacity in this area, but we have some strength in this area and we need to work on those areas that we have weaknesses through to self-growth, where we understand that we're on a learning journey and we are constantly trying to improve and develop and become the best, in this case, teachers as we can be. But if we're focused around students, we want them to be the best learners that they can be and the best citizens and a whole range of um, self-beliefs around their capacity for self-growth. And the final two, one is social orientation. Are the, is the organization focused on the individuals and individual capacity to succeed and develop and so forth? Is it around collaborative um, development where we have group works and teams of educators and teams of administrators working together to achieve various organizational outcomes? Through to seeing the organization as a community where it's a living dynamic community where everyone's supporting one another and the community as a whole develops and progresses. And then there's an aspect of transparency. Is everything kept quite private and decision making is kept um, to those, only those that have to absolutely know about what's occurring and um, be involved in the processes? Through to various limited exposures that you might have um, all the staff knowing what's occurring and the strategic planning and process that are occurring, 
but not necessarily involving the students or their parents or other organizations through to everything being public and all the decision making processes and outcomes and aims and goals being completely transparent with everyone being able to comment on and critique and engage with. So these are a range of different elements of transforming an educational organization. So they all provide various aspects um, that you can incorporate into your own transformation planning. Now, remember, you're doing this through a technology, an educational technology, that it has the potential to impact upon a whole range of different elements within an organization that could be described as transformative. So you need to work out which of these you're going to incorporate into your transformation planning. And we're going to then explore some other aspects of how that can be developed. And we'll discuss these further in the tutorial. But also share these to teams about what your transformation plan is going to attempt to address, which of these transformation elements you want to see occur within your organization. Now, the next reading is an innovative, so innovation framework for holistic school transformation. And it identifies 10 critical conversations as it frames them, 10 significant elements that should be considered in transforming a 21st century learning organization. So it provides a general overall framework where we have the vision for the organization. In this case, anywhere, anytime, anywhere learning for all. Then it sets out a range of leadership and policy frameworks um, around quality assurance and strategic planning and partnerships and teacher and leadership capacity. And we've explored those in the policy module. Then a range of 21st century pedagogies that could be achieved, incorporating curriculum and inclusion and accessibility, personalized learning, learning communities and learning environments. And we looked at those in the first module. All towards designing a technology for efficient and effective schooling. And this brings in the ICT, the technology element, into the overall innovation framework. So if in this, it then looks at what it calls pillars. So the where, the what, and the how. So um, the elements that are attempting to be changed, um, what that change should involve, and how that change should be accomplished. So a range of different elements that the text goes through and explains in more detail. But again, things that you can consider as part of your own transformation planning of the sorts of things you would like to see transformed within your educational organization. Um, it has a framework around this for, um, particularly around the um, initiators, or as the term we've been using quite a bit, um, the um, stakeholders, the key stakeholders. So there'll be some that will be champions and these will be the innovators, the leaders, the first adopters. Then you'll have a process of creation where we have, in this case, student work being created, um, lessons and assessment processes. Then you've got some communication processes, particularly around um, that collaborative team building um, elements. Um, and then you've got some celebration processes, uh, but also incorporating feedback and evaluation of what's occurred within the organization. So as part of this innovation framework, you've got the visioning process again, um, the strategic planning, the quality assurance, the various elements that we've explored in other frameworks. But this partic particular model sets out an integrative framework for um, innovation within an organization in order to transform what's occurring. Um, it has a few um, examples where they've designed technology for efficient and effective schools. Um, in this case, for an early years um, process, we're looking at concrete thinking as being strengthened um, towards developing abstract thinking capacity. 
um, that optimize various cognitive development processes um, through to conceptual development. And they've set up various learning environments using the Vygotsky model, um, where we build on students' capacity to learn just beyond what their existing capacity um, is. So we need to first identify what their existing capacity is for learning, and then we set new learning to go just beyond that, but not so far as it's beyond their capacity. But it also uses um, a set of theories from um, John Ason around technology affordances and around how technology can support that learning environment development process. Um, but they've also incorporated theories from Mishra and Collier around the role of teachers in those processes being a guide um, initially around their um, cognitive skills and their psychomotor skills, so the ability to do things and to think about things, through to being a guide around their conceptual and reasoning skill development. And finally, some professional development to support that process, um, initially around the, the, the media and the content and the lesson activities that are available, through to um, looking at the data that's achieved from students engaging with these processes, understanding that data and being able to abstract from that um, an understanding of um, their conceptual development around various concepts. Uh, another framework was built around public-private community partnerships and employability. Um, again, setting out a vision for what is to be achieved and then a range of strategies and elements to be considered in the transformation planning. Um, in this case, particularly around the setting up those partnerships and how that can transform an organization, but how technology can be an important aspect of that, um, particularly being able to set up networks and bring in outside expertise and incorporate what the partners are doing with what's occurring within the organization. So in the tutorials, again, we're looking at this document and how you can look at your own transformational planning framework and how it might be able to incorporate some of these ideas. So they're a little bit less or more fuzzy than some of the other frameworks, but they set out some processes for transformation that we don't necessarily see in some of the other frameworks. And then there's another um, one looking at the transformation process itself and some, a guide for formulating and implementing visions. Uh, remembering that in your policy um, development module, you developed a vision for the organization as a whole. Now for your transformational planning, you need to develop a specific vision for how that transformation is going to occur within the organization and what is going to be transformed what is specifically going to be transformed by your transformation process. Um, and this document goes through a series of steps to achieve that. Um, first off, looking at what does the success, what does the achievement of the transformation look like? What are the end goals? Some processes on how to achieve that. Various activities that need to occur during those processes and a series of key considerations that need to be considered in that transformational process. Now, these incorporate aspects of introspection. So looking at the organization, looking at its strengths and weaknesses, what is actually not working, what needs to change to make the organization work. These are part of introspection. Then are processes of inquiry, looking at what may be achieved within the organization. What are the various strengths and weaknesses of various individuals and stakeholders? What are the leverage points around those stakeholders that can help them um, support the transformation you wish to see occur? And that incorporates an aspect of inclusion, how we can incorporate as many stakeholders as possible within our transformation planning. So to make it more likely to be achieved, we incorporate all of the stakeholders that are going to be involved with the transformation. Then there'll be some aspects of innovation Transformation involves doing something different, something innovative. Um, 
So you're going to need to explore what is going to be new in your organization as a result of the educational technology that is being incorporated. And then there'll be aspects of implementation of actually how to go about that transformation. And we'll be exploring that over the next couple of weeks. And then there'll be various insights that you'll have developed from the transformation process. So as it relates to feedback and evaluation, but it's what you've learned about um, educational technologies, about transformation, about what's possible through having done the transformation process. Now, you can't necessarily talk about much about that beforehand, but you can set up the processes that will allow consideration of what has been learned. So around gathering feedback, gathering data, conducting evaluations, and these will support the development of a better understanding um, at the end of the process, as we do in research, in terms of research outcomes from a research study, um, they involve insight into what's happened in what is being studied. Likewise, in a transformational process, we want to better understand what is occurring. And this relates to action research. We go through an action process of conducting a transformation plan to learn more about what is occurring. And that can then be reported and published as research. We have learned, we have gained insight, we have gone through an action research process to better understand what has occurred through the transformation process. Okay, so in each of these steps, first off we have introspection. Um, looking at the teams of teachers, students, and parents, and school leaders that collaborate to define a vision. Um, but again, looking at what the core value, what does everyone value? What makes them want to achieve this, this vision? What investment do they have around achieving this vision? But also, what are the weaknesses? What are the elements that are problematic? Um, much of vision setting can be to address deficiencies not just explore new opportunities. Then there's that process of inquiry, looking at what is able to be achieved, but also again, what's possible within that organization. Not everything may be achievable. Um, there will be some limitations based upon staffing and organizational structures and historical processes that have been occurring, but also external requirements around preparing students for work, um, meeting various reporting regimes, only so much can be achieved and that needs to be explored. Then, as I mentioned, there's that process of inclusion, of seeking input and strategic partnerships, not just trying to do everything on your own or within the organization's capacity on its own. And part of that relates back to the previous point, identifying weaknesses so that we can bring in outside expertise or partner with other organizations or partner with other countries, partner with other teachers to build the capacity around what needs to be um, developed. And there are various inclusive elements then that we can incorporate in there. But there's also the inclusion within your organization, bringing on those key stakeholders, making sure everyone feels involved in the process. Then there's the aspect of innovation again, um, deciding upon what is going to be changed. And there's, as we've been seeing throughout this course, there's lots that we can incorporate into a transformation process. Not all can be done in a single transformational project. You need to make decisions about what you feel is the most important and most appropriate regarding the technology that's going to be uh, adopted. Then again, there's that aspect on implementation, but building into that also though, that reporting and monitoring aspects that we will see in evaluation. Um, that needs to be explored at the very start before implementation occurs, because it's much harder to retrofit evaluation at the end of a process than if you incorporate it in at the start. And then there's that aspect of continuous improvement um, through insight, um, considering it all as a research process exploring what we've learned and then how we can then apply that to the organization.
Okay, so share to Teams, um, some examples within your transformation plan of what you want to see occurring in these processes. Um, what elements you're planning on transforming and some of these implications and elements that you need to consider in your transformation planning. And come to tutorial prepared to discuss how your transformation plan aims to address these processes. So that's it for this week. And I look forward to exploring these in more detail in the tutorial.